Greetings, Down River Church. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you for your kind words, your thoughts, and your prayers as my family and I um, spent time with my father before he passed last Friday night. And we just appreciate all that you had um, you had said, you sent, and, and just, you know, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts and, you know, for helping us get through this time that was a pretty hard time for us in that. So let us begin with prayer. Well, gracious Lord, we just thank you so much for all the blessings you have given us. And Lord, we're just, we're sad we can't be together, especially during this time of worship. We miss fellowship. We miss just seeing each other. So Lord, even though we're just sitting at home watching on our computers, watching on the website, could you please just let us feel connected in some way? Lord, we ask that you be with those that are suffering with illness. Be with those that are grieving. Be with those that are just struggling so much with this virus and with this fear and with the anxiety. Lord, we just ask that you be with those at this time. Take any burdens we have and lift them up and just give us this time to worship together and give us this time to, to be together and to feel your presence. And Lord, I ask that you just fill me with your spirit so that your truths flow through my mouth. Let it be you that shares your word with all those that gather to listen to what I have to say today. So Lord, we're just going to lift all that up to you during this time of worship. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask you please to grab your Bibles, grab your phones, and, and turn to the Gospel of John. And we're going to be looking at chapter 20. And today I'm going to continue the story of the resurrection and through the eyes of Thomas. And... Just, um, I'll be sharing John chapter 20, and I'll be reading verses 24 through 28. And I'll be reading from the NIV translation. So this is what John wrote. John writes, Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he says to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were in the house. Again, and Thomas was with them. And through the doors, and though the doors were locked, Jesus came and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord, my God. Well, here we are in what? Week six of not being able to be together in worship, not being together in fellowship. And for most of the, for most of the part, there's so many who are living in such a time of anxiety. And many in our world are anxious. They're afraid. They're trying to protect themselves. And everyone is just so unsure of the future. And many are dreading missing the past. High school seniors are missing out on the traditional things that happen for high school seniors. Colleges have canceled their graduation ceremonies altogether. And it seems like we're just living in this age of terrorism, random violence, and now the coronavirus. But you see, we're not the first to have gone through a time of fear, through a time of anxiety. You see, back 2,000 some years ago, the disciples faced some pretty heavy fears and anxieties on that first Easter evening as well. Their lives, it seemed, were in ruins. And if you think about it, here they had left their homes. Many had left their families. They left their secure jobs just to follow Jesus. And through this journey with him, they watched as Jesus healed the sick, raised the dead, and proclaimed the love of God. And now he was crucified. He was no longer with them. And the worst of their fears had come true. And they were all alone in this scary world. What were they to do? How were they supposed to cope? And some even thought, was life even just worth living still? You see, they found themselves caught up in a whirlpool of fear and in anxiety. And even Peter, the boldest of them all, in all his brave vows of loyalty to Jesus, were followed with fear. Followed with words of denial, just like Jesus said. The mocking, the beating, the horror of Jesus' death had left Jesus' disciples understandably shell-shocked. You see, the thing is, 
when they had been following him, they never really quite understood what Jesus meant or what he was talking about, especially when he told them that the Son of Man must suffer, must die, and then be raised on the third day. And yet for three years they had devoted their lives to following Jesus, listening to Jesus. And they thought Jesus was never going to go away. He'd never leave them. He loved them too much. And as our gospel lesson says, it says, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. Fear of the Jews? What's that supposed to mean, right? And I say that because the disciples were living in dread fear. You see, they were so fearful that the next knock that was going to happen on the door would be the signal that they were going to be the next ones to face the cross. Everything felt like it was crashing in. Their world was just a big whirlwind and, and unknown. And then suddenly on that first Easter evening, everything changed. You see, suddenly Jesus was among them. No lot could keep Jesus out. And Jesus came right back into their lives. You see, he hadn't left them for good. All was not lost after all. Actually, it was far from it. Because John writes this, John says, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Isn't that great that that's the kind of God that we, that we have? Can you imagine if Jesus had coldly looked at the frightened bunch and started to share with them the recent words that they had told Jesus and promised Jesus and their actions? You could just picture Jesus, or you imagine Jesus, I should say, saying, Let's see, Peter. Let me hear again what you had to say. Even if all fall away on account of you, I will never, never will. Even if I have to die with you, I will never, ever disown you. Isn't that what you said, Peter? So what happened, big guy? Could you just picture Jesus wanting to say that? Or how about you, James and John? Can you drink the cup of suffering that I, that I drink? Can you? Where were you guys? You see, in this hour of need, Jesus' disciples had scattered. And Jesus would have given them, could have, should have, given them an angry lecture. He could have made them feel even worse about themselves than they already did. But you see, Jesus didn't do that. And that's not what God is like. Instead, Jesus came to them and says, Peace be with you. For that's what they really needed to hear at that time. That's what they lacked. They needed to be made whole again. They beat themselves up so bad, and they needed to hear that, peace be with you. They needed to be set free. They needed to be set free from their guilt, the anxiety that was locked inside of them. And they needed what only Jesus can give, and that's forgiveness. That's new hope, and that's actually a reason for living. And isn't it that what we all need as well? And when we found our, yourself shaking in fear behind closed doors, perhaps maybe this is your normal experience. Maybe on the outside, you're able to give off an air of confidence and nonchalance, but inside you're just bursting with anxiety, trying to show others how tough you are. But you notice that after Jesus said, peace be with you, he showed the disciples his hands and his side. And then we're told that the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. It's kind of similar to the story that, that we hear on Easter Sunday about Mary Magdalene thinking that Jesus was the gardener until he spoke her name. You see, in Luke's telling of the story, we're told that at first the disciples thought Jesus was a ghost. And then after they touched his hand, they saw the Lord. I have to share that. I've read this passage over and over. And, you know, we, we hear this passage year after year, especially you know, Easter Sunday and the Sundays after. And I and, and I'm used to think like, okay, I get it. They recognize Jesus. They saw they saw Jesus. But I have to say, after the week I just spent being on my father's side, I think there was more to this passage than I never noticed before. And you see, my dad was out of it, just to be frank, and he was coherent on Wednesday. And Wednesday happened to be my birthday, by the way, and, and he was awake for most of it. And his language wasn't clear, but some of the words, most of the words, I should say, were understandable. And he'd become restless throughout the day and, and that. He was saying things to us and, and so forth, but we had to stay with him. We had to take turns staying by his side because he kept trying to get out of bed. 
But I noticed during this time that we, we each spent with him, that we each had that time with him, we each experienced a different part of dad's life. And what, what I mean about that is he was, with each of us, he was in a different period of his life. So we each kind of kind of had a little bit of a journey with dad. And I know that sounds strange, but it was actually pretty, it was beautiful. It was great, a great experience. And what I mean by that is when he held my sister's hand, he was back in Gladwin. He was working in the yard. He was, you know, the horses, and he was just out with the animals and the dogs. And, and he was just going on and on and on. And then he would start talking about, my sister, my sister has a way of decorating, and she, especially around the holidays, she, she goes overboard. It's beautiful when it's all done, but the chaos is chaos. And he would get so mad and irritated with her decorating and over-decorating this house. But yet when it's done, he'd say, oh, that's nice. You know, he, he really liked it. But the process he did not like. And he kind of was going through that with her. He was talking to her about it and, and that. And then my niece went in and sat with him and was holding his hand. And he was still in Gladwin with her. And they were grocery shopping, and that used to be their routine. They would go grocery shopping, and my dad always had his list, and my niece would always throw things in the cart, and he'd say, hey, that's not on the list, and she says, it is today, Pap. And, and so that was kind of like their little joke, their their time together. And um, my dad was always at her sporting events, so he started asking her about her basketball games. And my niece is 21, and she's a she's um, junior over at, at Western University, and so he was like back in you know middle school, high school time with her. And then... Um, then it came my time, and, and you know, and I was I had, was working on, you know, reading over my message because I knew I was trying to record it before all this happened, and he was, like, holding my hand. But my journey with Dad was when I was little. So he was asking me about, um, you know, what did I want for lunch, and we watched Captain Kangaroo, and we and we uh, were going to go visit the neighbors, the Weavers, and it was just like he had this thing, and, and I wasn't quite figuring out, like, we were in Madison Heights, we were in Ferndale, and we were like in these places, and you know, we were a little bit brightened in that, but he was like, he was taking me like as I was growing up. And um, one point he, th he, was, he acted like he threw a basket, and it, uh, he told me it ended up on the roof. And I said, well, I'll go get the ladder. And, and he held my hand real tight, and he started laughing. And he's like, Jackie, you're too little. You can't get on that roof. You know, you got to wait for me. I'll, I, we'll do it together. And it was just sort of like, oh, okay, you know, but it was just that, like, wow, he just, every time he kept seeing me. And then later on that day, I, I went back and, you know, it was my turn again to sit with them. And, and I, had my, um, I had my reader with me. So I was reading, and, and he says to me, he says, is that your Bible? And I just said, yes, because, you know, he, he was so in and out of it. And I said, you know, do you want me to read it to you? And, you know, he always joked with me on that. And he's just like, yeah, read me all about God. And, and then he'd start laughing and, and that. And he started telling me, he's like, you know, you got to, he says, you got to keep this up. And he says, make sure you share the good news to all the people. People need to know about God. And it was just, um, it was just interesting because he, he's always, he's always been a wise man. He's always, you know, he knew the Bible in and out, and he, he could tell you scripture. He could tell you that, and he just was that. Um, it was just, I don't know. It was just an interesting experience with this. So then my mom comes in. It's her turn, and it was like he was in present time with her. And he actually reminisced, like, their time together, you know, when they met and and, um, and this, then when they, you know, the houses they lived in and, and the times they've had, some of the fun times, you know, some of the not some fun times that they had. And he talked about missing her, how he's going to miss her. And most of all, he talked about how much he loved her. And it was like each time we touched my dad's hands, we all had an experience. He saw us. And it was like he, he saw us on this journey of, the good times, and how when he held our hands, it took him to a place that he cherished the most with us, with each of us. He took us to that time when um, that brought him most joy, and that was just the most comforting. So when he did pass, it really was a, a peaceful, because we, we, we got to spend that time with Dad. We got to spend that extra time. But as we're sitting here listening to the different stories and, and you know listening to him talk and share, it kind of reminded me of like the scripture passage in the disciples. It was actually a cool moment there. And when they saw the hands and Jesus says, touch my hands, touch my side, look at that. I just wonder like if they touched Jesus, did they see that time like we did with dad? Like did they get to see that special moment that they had with Jesus? Did it come to them? Did they feel it? Did they feel the release? Did they feel the Holy Spirit's presence? And, and we know the Holy Spirit comes much later, but did they feel like a 
or joy or relief or something? Did they feel Jesus? Did they, did they see that special time that they had with him? Because Jesus says to them, peace be with you. And I just wonder, like, did they really actually feel that peace? Did they, did they feel the peace that we felt that moment like my dad passed? Did they feel the joy of the Spirit when they realized it was really Jesus? Because, you know, that's what Jesus truly offered. That's why he offered these words. This was a gift that he was giving, the gift of peace. He wasn't just giving empty words, just trying to be a nice guy here. He was trying to offer them this gift. And because they recognize that the person who is speaking to them is the Lord, we know that God is a God of peace and love. There are times in our lives, though, when we, when we need to hear that again and again, especially when we're, we're fearful, especially when we believe that we are just troubled and, and not wanting and just fearful of what's going around us. And we need to keep telling ourselves that, Lord, that God is the God of peace, that God is the God of love. And we need to keep doing that until we truly believe that we are made perfect in love and that we are able to receive the true peace that God has for us. Did you know that the Bible says the exact phrase, peace be with you, 366 times? And that's one time for every day of the year and even an extra leftover one for leap year. So when troubles come upon us, when difficulties come our way, it's easy for us to forget these promises that God has and easy for us to forget that Jesus even existed in the first place. That's one reason why a regular habit of worship, of scripture reading, of prayer is so important. You see, by making God's word, and I know we're in different places right now, but when we spend time together in fellowship, when we spend time as Christian believers and make that a regular part of our lives, that's when we imprint it in our hearts, the words Jesus, that will help us when we face troubled times and feel like our life is nothing but difficulties. You see, once we imprint that on our hearts, we're automatically, automatically going to know that we're not to flee from Jesus, but instead we're to run to Jesus. Run into Jesus' loving arms. So let these words sink into your heart, into your life, and take them, take them to heart. Peace be with you. That's what Jesus says. Jesus also says, I have conquered death in the grave. Is there any bigger obstacle than that? I am the Lord of life and of death, and I will always be with you. There are no circumstances in this life where you will be alone. See, we're told in the gospel lesson that Thomas wasn't with the other disciples on that first Easter evening when Jesus came. And he crossed his arms and he declared to the other disciples, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put a finger where nails were and put my hand into his side, I'm not going to believe it. So a week later happens and the disciples are together again and this time Thomas was with them. And again, Jesus came and stood among them and says, peace be with you. Then he looks right at Thomas, and he looks at him and he says, Here, put your finger right here. See my hands? Reach out. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting. Believe, Thomas. Come on. Believe. Believe what you're seeing. And Thomas says to him, My Lord and my God. See, Thomas was the first person in the Gospel of John to look at Jesus and call him God. Yet, this is the writer of the Gospel of John has been aiming towards since the beginning of, of his book. You see, he writes, Jesus did many other signs in presence of his disciples. John also writes that, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John began writing in his book, starting out in chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And then he says, And no one has ever seen God, but God the one and only, who was at the Father's side, has made him known. So what does that mean? What does that look like when it's actually happening? Well, you see, it looks like the story of Jesus. See, through Galilee and Jerusalem, back and forth with moments of glory and doom woven all together until they meet on the cross. And now a week after Easter, we're confronted with a smiling Jesus who has just walked through a locked door saying, peace be with you. And that's what this gospel is all about. 
Because we serve a God who has come into this world in order to bring us peace and make us whole. And we, we need not to be fear, filled with fear and anxiety, especially now, especially during these times. And this is what the gospel is all about. We serve a God who has come into this world in order to bring us peace and make us whole. And we need not be filled with any anxiety or any fear for that matter. And the reason is, is because we don't face our troubles alone. See, the God who created the world is with us. The God who created this world loves us more than we could ever possibly imagine. And if the point is to believe in God, in Jesus, and through the, this faith, and to, in life, to have in his name. John says, in him was life. And yes, this life can be in us as well. Because John confirms it actually in chapter 1. This is verses 12 to 13. This is what John writes. John writes, to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God, children born not of a natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. You see, we've, we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only who came from the Father, full of grace, full of truth. And as he said to the disciples so long ago, he says the same exact thing to us. And that is, peace be with you. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for always being there with us. Father, continue to be here with us and continue to let us feel your presence. But most of all, let us feel those words and then print them on our hearts. Peace be with you. And help us to share those with, with those that we encounter that are seeking and those that we encounter that are lost. Let us say to them, peace be with you. Lord, continue to be with us, the church, and help us to be the church. Even though we cannot physically be together in one building and we're all scattered all over this area called Down River. Lord, be with us and help us to continue to be your church. In your most gracious name, amen. At this time of our service, this is usually when the ushers come forward and receive our, our offering for today. And first, I just want to thank those of you who have been mailing in your checks, those who have been dropping your checks off. We really do appreciate it. The church needs to still go on. We still have a building. We still have bills. We still have salaries. We still have, you know, the typical things that go on with, with the church building, with the business and, and so forth. So first, thank you so much for those of you who are graciously um, still giving in your tithing. And we just... Ask others to please pray about it. Pray about it and just um, continue to keep the church in prayer. Keep this, all the churches in prayer as we spend this time apart from each other, but actually together sharing the word and, and worshiping God. So God bless you all. Be strong. Be healthy. But most of all, stay faithful. And reach out to one another and remind them, peace be with you. Amen.